Hey, welcome back guys. Today I thought I'd take a look at uh, a new uh, Linux installation that uh, basically states that it's a very, very close replica of Windows. It is using Linux. It's Ubuntu based. Um, and it's called Linux FX. Let me open up the uh, distro watch. Now you can see Linux X FX here, 10.5 version. There's a little blurb about it on the front page. I, I downloaded it and I installed it. And I'm going to bring you up to date on what I have found. Now, first of all, Kudos to them for actually attempting to do something that might make it easier for someone to switch from Windows to Linux. As you can see, this really, it, this is the closest theming to Windows that I have seen of any Linux distribution. Uh, I, I installed it. There have been some hiccups. Let me show you. I'll show you around a little bit. As you can see, all of the desktop icons really closely approximate the look of, of uh, Windows. The This is a Cinnamon desktop based, uh, and so they have themed it so that it kind of looks like the Windows menu, start menu. If you click on the control panel up in the top left, you can see that this really looks like the control panel for Windows 10. Now, you, you, I'm not going to dig into every f uh, facet and every feature, but if you take a look down here, basically, and let me pull up the website first. This is their website, and uh, evidently it's a Portuguese, uh, native Portuguese installation. You, Of course, you can uh, have the website translate into English, but you see where it says improved compatibility for running EXE and MSI apps. Um, then there's a, a you know a little bit of information here. It says Windows FX maintains optimal compatibility with applications developed for Microsoft Windows. Install the EXE MSI compatibility mode on the control panel so that your computer can run programs of this format with just two clicks. Now, I'm gonna actually try that. I haven't tried that yet, but I'm going to. And I, I, I believe it, uh, they're basically running Wine in, it, in order to enable uh, running Windows programs. There is a complete Office suite, um, and it says ready to work from home. And they go on to mention all of the applications that would enable you to do that. So, if you guys are interested, just pull up the website and I'll, I'll post a link. Uh, but let's take a look at some of the issues here. Now, first of all, when I installed it, the installation is not as straightforward as most Ubuntu-based distributions. I did have some problems getting it to install. Um, it, it's, it's a little bit... Uh, l less friendly, less user friendly on the installation. They didn't use Ubuntu's normal installation process. They changed it up a little bit, which in my opinion made it a little bit more difficult. However, it is doable. I did it. Um, the other thing, it, it wasn't, it didn't lend itself as easily to installing alongside another Linux installation. I ended up having to install it to a separate SSD. Um, you know, I had the extra SSD hanging around, so it was no big deal. Now, the there is a uh, feature like uh, on, I think Microsoft changed it, but they had the Cortana uh, Assistant. Uh, and this symbol down here. Hello. I'm ready to help you. Uh, is a similar a type of assistant. You can get rid of it. You don't have to run that on there, but I, I left it just to show you. And you can do a few things from here. Uh, and I believe you can use voice commands to get information. So I'm going to exit out of that. But that's what this little circle is here for. Hello. I'm ready to help you. 
Okay, so uh, that's one feature on the taskbar. There is a Google search. I have not used it. Software, files, uh, Chrome. Chrome runs fine. Um, and now there is a, you know, if, if these are all applications that come preloaded. The only thing I installed was GUVC View, Simple Screen Recorder, and OpenShot. Everything else, oh, I'm sorry, SM Player. Everything else was already pre-installed. So it's it's a pretty uh, comprehensive installation. Now, this assistant is Hello. called... I'm ready to help you. Helloa, H-E-L-L-O-A. Uh, it does have a name. Now, I had a few problems as I mentioned. The login hangs. So once in a while, you'll if you go to sleep or it reboots or when the login screen comes up, it hangs. Once you enter your password, it hangs for maybe 20, 30 seconds before it actually goes to the desktop. The other thing about the login is I, when I installed it, I set it up for auto login. It's, it's never done that. It's not transferring that to the installation. So I have to enter a password every time. Um, in the middle of, uh, I was playing a YouTube video and all of a sudden it changed the output so my speakers went dead i had to go back into the control panel and change the uh change the the output back to what i wanted it to be but you can see in here there's pretty much everything covered as far as uh the control panel and here is the helloa h-e-l-l-o-a so here's the configuration for that now i'm going to go ahead and click here and I haven't done that before so let's see what this does install extra libraries for better functioning of my Microsoft Windows apps this option will automatically install some tools and libraries from the Microsoft environment on the system so that you can run most apps on the MS Windows platform and there's a link here for wine CFG and wine tricks I'm going to click on next. Do you want to install Windows FX compatibility tools? Yes. Procedure may take a few minutes. Please do not try to close the windows and wait for the procedure to finish. Okay. Now while we go over that, I'm going to uh I'm going to Okay, I'll just leave that alone. See, it's, it's, it's installing Wine. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of screenshots that uh, illustrate some particular issues that I had. Now, when you, after the install, when you go to log in, you can see that it looks very much like Windows login. Let me close that out. Now, this one here, this is the uh, login screen. You can see there's a place to enter your password, the time, the date, and uh, there's a notifications up in the top left. And Windows Update. So here, I went to install the Windows Update and it's telling me, it told me there was an update and then it told me it was already installed. You can see right here, this update is already installed. So the update process isn't as clean as I'd like. Now here, it tells me my my system is not up to date. You can see there's a link here to, to apply the updates. Uh, there's a driver update, which I'll get to that in one second. search for new drivers, which, which I did, 
because it it did it was not it didn't install my Wi-Fi drivers out of the box. I had to go through that, and it actually gave me problems installing. You can see there's my Broadcom Wi-Fi, and it was not installed. I tried to install it, and I ran into some problems. Error. So uh, during the install. I got the error message and it never finished. I had to go and manually install it. So that's not good. You can see that even when I uh, tried to install some of the files, error processing package BCMWL kernel source. That's the Broadcom Wi-Fi. I had to go, when I saw that, I knew what, what uh, package I had to install. So I installed uh, BCMWL STA or Broadcom STA DKMS and then my Wi-Fi drivers appeared okay you can see here when I decided to install Broadcom STA DKMS that's 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 the uh, basically in the process of the installation and let's see this one Okay, so after the installation, you can see it was using it. I, I do have my Wi-Fi uh, networks available to me. So I was able to pretty much get things resolved. But what I'm thinking is that the an average Linux, an, an average person who wants to install Linux to get away from Windows, they're probably not going to be able to do that. And so I think it defeats the purpose um, of the distribution itself. It's supposed to be an easy way for a Windows user to get away from Windows and into Linux. This isn't quite there yet. It is a step in the right direction, um, but it needs to be cleaned up a little bit. And so I'm going to uh, see how this Wine installation goes, and then we will try to install um, an EXE, Windows EXE uh, program, and I'll also try to install through um, a Windows MSI file. So we'll try both, see if they work. I'm going to pause the installation while this finishes up, and I, I'll be right back, guys. Okay, guys, <clears throat> so it, it finished, and when I clicked on Wine CFG, I did go through the Wine configuration. All I did was change to Windows 10, and then when I clicked on Wine Tricks, it brings up, it brings up the uh, Wine Tricks application. It asked me what I want, what do I want to do? So I'm I'm going to select install an application, and then. Basically, you have to select from the applications on their list. So I'm not going to do that uh, because I prefer not to have to deal with wine tricks. So I'm just going to cancel out of it. Cancel. Close that, and then I downloaded two uh, applications. So we're gonna go to Downloads, and we're going to see if this MSI will install. Open with Wine MSI. Okay, so I am opening that. Okay, let's see if it finishes. Okay, so Wine did install the Playground Sessions Piano Instruction app. I'm gonna close that out. That's one that appeared to work fine. Now I'm going to, I'm gonna create a folder called Piano. I'm going to extract 
Okay, so it's not giving me the option to extract to another folder. So let's, we'll do it here. Okay, so it, it did extract into this folder here. And let's go into the 64. And let's see if this will run. It did. So that actually worked pretty well. That worked fine. So it installed both an MSI installation file and also uh, it, this is basically an EXE file. So it did uh, run through the two Windows examples properly. So just to summarize guys, this is Linux FX and you can see it on distro watch it is listed there's a little blurb on the main page you can go into their website read through it see if it might be something for you or, or maybe someone in your family who wants to get away from a uh, windows into linux now as i said there are still a few bugs uh, but it's a really big step in the right direction and i think for someone who is not too computer savvy, but does, does run Windows and wants to run Linux, wants to get away from Windows, this is probably a good starting point. Um, and now, so now the, the, the burden now is gonna be on Linux FX to go and, and address some of these uh, issues that are still making it less user-friendly than it really needs to be. Considering that it's supposed to be something that uh, a Windows user can can use to switch to Linux and uh, just needs a little bit more polishing a little bit more cleanup and I think it would be ready for prime time <clears throat> so guys that is it for today's video thank you very much for stopping by the channel today please rate comment and subscribe and I will see you soon take care